thank you all for coming. We're delighted to have you here. My name is John Hamry. I'm the president at CSIS, and it's an enormous honor uh, to be able to welcome President Tsang here today. This is a, a historic visit. Uh, this is the first time uh, in American history that we've been able to greet the president of Vietnam. And uh, given that we've had such a, a, a unique and tortured history with each other, this is a celebration. And we're delighted to have this opportunity. Uh, President Tsang and President Obama made some news today. President Obama committed to visit Vietnam. It probably won't happen this year, but he is going to be getting to Vietnam. And I think it's uh, a signal and a testament to how this relationship is deepening and growing and becoming so much stronger every day. And we feel very honored that we could be a part of this, to be able to bring President Tsang with his message to the Washington policy community. And I'm just uh, thrilled that we do have this opportunity. The President intends to outline his uh, strategic vision for Vietnam in the context of uh, a dramatically uh, and dynamic evol evolution in, in Asia. This is one of the most interesting times. And so it's a great privilege to be able to welcome him and introduce him. Before assuming the presidency, uh, President Tsang was the standing member of the Secretariat to the Vietnamese Communist Party from 2006 until 2011. He was head of the Party Central Commission on Economic Affairs from 2000 to 2006 and Party Secretary in Ho Chi Minh City from 1996 to 2000. We are delighted that he's here and look forward to hearing his views. Uh, Ernie Bauer, who heads up the Southeast Asia program uh, and is the Sumitro chairholder at CSIS, is going to field the question and answer period. But could I ask you now, with your applause, to welcome the President of Vietnam, His Excellency President Tsang. Dr. Sean Hamry, President and CEO, Center of Strategic and International Studies. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, I have great pleasure to come here and speak to you at the CI, uh, CSIS. In the audience, I am aware of the presence of many renowned scholars. Many of you have maintained long-standing interests in Vietnam, and many of you have made outstanding contributions to the relations between Vietnam and the United States. My compliments and best wishes to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate the role of the CSIS as a preeminent strategic think tank in the United States and the world. It has played a great role in fostering dialogue and understanding between the political circles, academia, and the public of the two nations. The CSIS also plays a very important role in promoting awareness of issues related to security, peace, stability, and prosperity in the region. These are the concerns and interests that our nations share. And this is a very important and essential factor that helps promote the cooperation between Vietnam and the United States in the coming period. I wish to raise a few thoughts on the strategic environment of the Asia-Pacific region and bilateral relations between Vietnam and America in this context. The profound and unprecedented changes in the world over the last decades have confirmed Asia-Pacific as the most dynamic region in the 21st century. Asia-Pacific leads the world in economic integration. We have 10 out of 20 leading economies here. 
the flow of trade across the Pacific now accounts for two-thirds of the world's total. The region also contributes 40% of the world's total growth. Today, Asia-Pacific stands as a destination of opportunities for all countries in the world. The United States share its Pacific Rim with us. Europe enjoys long-standing ties with Asia, and countries on the Indian Ocean are closely tied with the Pacific through the Malacca Straits. Economic prosperity of all countries, be it the United States, China, Japan, Korea, or India, and ASEAN member states all contribute to the overall prosperity of the region. A prosperous Asia, in its terms, serves as a catalyst for the development of each country. The development of this region is tied to that of the rest of the world. Therefore, there is little wonder that today's leading powers all place Asia Pacific at the forefront of their foreign policies. These enormous opportunities offered by the region are conducive to the trend of cooperation and dynamic connectivity. Regional forums, such as APEC, ASEM, continue their important role linking Pacific Rim countries with Asia and Asia with Europe. In the last several years, in addition to bilateral trade agreements, as well as the multilateral trade agreements, we note the emergence of more far-reaching multilateral trade agreements, such as Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP, free trade agreements in Northeast Asia, and the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RE, RCEP. These linkages will make up a sizable share of the world's trade and create new growth engine for and will lead to changes in the global economy. We can even speak of an eventual free trade agreement that encompasses the entire Asia-Pacific FTAAT. Needless to say, the successful realization of these linkages is of strategic importance to all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, our region has vast potentials to offer, but to translate them into reality requires an environment of peace and security in the region. Therefore, we must safeguard this environment of peace and stability. We must prevent and manage conflicts. This is a shared responsibility of countries within and outside the region. I believe that the key to a secured peace and prosperity is to build and consolidate a regional structure in this way we can promote cooperation and create linkages in among economies, among societies, in trades, politics, security, and culture. In this connection, ASEAN has an essential role to play. ASEAN countries lie at the crossroads between a the Pacific and Indian Ocean. We connect all countries in the region, large and small. ASEAN is at the heart of regionalism in Asia. And that is why all countries accept ASEAN's centrality in the emerging regional architecture. To ensure peace and security, ASEAN will bring to full use the established mechanisms and forums and promote the development and implementation of instruments, norms, and rules. To ensure freedom, safety, and security of navigation, ASEAN will promote dialogues, confidence-building measures, full implementation of the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties on the South China Sea DOC, settlement of disputes by peaceful means in accordance with the international law and the 1982 UN Convention on the Law of the Seas, 
Recently, ASEAN and China agreed to open formal consultations to a, a code of conduct on the South China Sea, or COC. This is positive, yet early sign, and we need to continue to work on it. To promote its role as the nexus of economic and trade connectivity in Asia, ASEAN will double its efforts to forge linkages among bilateral and multilateral free trade agreements with a view towards a region-wide free trade agreement. The drive towards closer regionalism will serve as the catalyst for economic relations and intertwined interests, which in turn guarantees lasting peace and stability. Major powers always maintain a grip on international relations at multilateral forums and in Asia-Pacific. To promote relations with external powers and partners is a priority for both ASEAN and Vietnam. In the quest for a solution to regional security issues, what ASEAN wants to see is the maintenance of peace and stability the effective operation of regional mechanisms and the strict adherence to the international law. We hope that all powers will constructively engage in and contribute to this common endeavor. ASEAN shall not be a tool for confrontation, containment, or division, as this will benefit no country, major powers, or smaller countries alike. In this context, the ASEAN community of 2015 has become the foremost priority for all ASEAN member states. For us in Vietnam, this is a very important component of our foreign policy. We have been engaging ourselves in ASEAN affairs in a proactive, positive, and responsible manner will link our interests with those of ASEAN. We strive to help enhance ASEAN's role, stature, unity, and consensus. Only by doing so can ASEAN have adequate strength to carry out successful the establishment of community building. We will work with other member states to consolidate, consolidate the role of the association as the nucleus of regionalism. We will intensify our interaction in a profound way with our external partners for the common goals and interests. Ladies and gentlemen, within this regional dynamism and prosperity, relations between Vietnam and the United States have broadened and taken off in many areas, in depth, in breadth, and in the quality of cooperation in these areas. If you look back on the long roads that we have taken so far historically, we can realize the truly enormous dimensions of those steps and achievements. You may be aware that about 100 years ago, President Ho Chi Minh stepped ashore the United States on his journey for freedom and independence for his nation. He shared the universal aspiration of the mankind as stated by Thomas Jefferson in the 1776 declaration that established the United States of America, the right to life equality, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In February 1946, not long after the founding of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, President Ho Chi Minh wrote to President Harry Truman, in which he expressed the desire of the two nations to establish full cooperation. History had 
has had many twists and turns. Not until 1995 did the two nations establish former diplomatic relations that opened a new chapter in the ties between Vietnam and the United States. For Vietnam, a strengthened relationship with the United States is within the context of our foreign policy in which we seek to ensure independence, self-reliance, diversification, and multilateralization of relations, the overall international integration, and the deepening of relations with important partners. I just held talks with President Obama, Obama this morning, and I have the pleasure to announce to you Vietnam and the United States have decided to form a comprehensive partnership between the two countries. Accordingly, our bilateral cooperation will expand to include all areas, including political, diplomatic, economic, trade, investment, education, science and technology, defense and security. I also had meetings with the Secretary of Commerce, Secretary of Agriculture, the U.S. Uh, Trade Representative, World Bank President, and IMF Executive Director, as well as meetings with senators and congressmen and the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations and Roundtable with Enterprises. President Obama and his cabinet secretaries stressed that our two countries' relations are presented with great opportunities to move forward and that the United States is committed to boost cooperation with Vietnam in many fields, especially in trade, investment, and economic ties. We continue to establish mechanisms for dialogue and cooperation with concrete plans in order to deepen and bring substances to the growth of bilateral relations. Another important element of this visit is that Vietnam and the United States have reiterated the determination and commitment to work with other partners to bring the TPP negotiations to a conclusion in, accord in accordance with the planned roadmap. We look to a balanced agreement for development. With the eventual joining of this leading economic linkage, Vietnam has taken a giant step in our overall international integration and in the regional dynamism and prosperity. We hope to realize the benefits in trade, investment, technology, access to higher stages of the global and regional value and supply chains. We also look to create more jobs to ensure social welfare and to bring the living standard of the population to a higher level. Joining the TPP, we also help accelerate economic restructuring and transformation of our growth model and also help further improve the business environment in Vietnam. We do not expect this to be an easy process for a developing country like Vietnam. We will make our utmost efforts, yet we look to see more of the U.S. side's flexibility and cooperation. This is a very important factor. U.S. business leaders whom I spoke to are affirmed their strong support for an overall bilateral ties, especially the trade and investment. And they would support a high standard comprehensive trade agreement that addresses the balanced interest of all parties. They would support a transitional period appropriate to Vietnam in the TPP process. We are conscious that when our bilateral relations develop in a stable, lasting, and substantial way that matters not only to both countries, but also to regional peace, stability, and prosperity, as well as development in the region. We welcome President Obama's commitment to enhance cooperation with Asia-Pacific for peace, stability, and cooperation in the region. The United States views ASEAN as the essential pillar of this policy 
and supports ASEAN's centrality in the regional architecture. The U.S. also voices support for the maintenance of peace, stability, security, maritime security, and safety in the East Sea. Apart from the TPP, Vietnam will accelerate cooperation with the United States at various forums, including ASEAN-led mechanisms, Mekong Sub-Regional Cooperation, East Asia Summit, and APEC. In the meantime, we need to work on outstanding issues that remain between us. As a nation with the Pacific tradition, Vietnam advocates shelving the past and looking to the future. I'm of the view that differences and disagreements exist as a matter of course in any international relation. What we need to do is to build confidence to build our relationship on the respect for each other's independence, sovereignty, equality, political system, and the principle of mutual benefits. Looking back on history of Vietnam-U.S. relations, the establishment of the comprehensive partnership today is the culmination of a forward-looking cooperation process pursued by both sides. It began with efforts for post-war normalization of relations, then the establishment of diplomatic ties in July 1995. Hence, a new era of relations between the two countries and peoples. In the past 18 years, bilateral relations have made great strides. 2005 marked yet another milestone with the establishment of a friendly, constructive, and multifaceted cooperative partnership on the basis of equality, mutual respect, and mutual benefits. With the growth of bilateral ties comes the change in how we work together. The policy of embargo and settlement sanction as the modality of relations between the two exposed gave way to the policy of reconciliation, multifaceted cooperation, and a forging constructive partnership under the principles of respect for each other's political system, mutual benefits, dialogue, and increased exchanges to bridge differences. Bilateral trade and economic ties have been growing fast. The United States became Vietnam's largest export market in 2005. Then, within 18 years, bilateral trade saw a 54-fold increase. By the end of May 2013, U.S. total investment in Vietnam amounted to $10.5 billion, ranking seven among countries and territories investing in our country. Cooperation in science, technology, culture, education, tourism, defense, and security has all seen substantial growth. A range of activities has been conducted with fruitful results and positive impacts on both sides on such areas as healthcare, humanitarian cooperation like mine clearance, unexploded ordinances, consequences of Agent Orange and dioxin accounting for missing people in the war. On the topic of human rights, we acknowledge that there are differences. The most viable way to resolve this is to continue our dialogue in a frank manner so as to enhance understanding and to narrow differences. It is with that spirit that during the meetings with U.S. senators and congressmen, we exchange views in an open and friendly manner on our bilateral relations, including human rights and religious issues. I also invited several religious dignitaries from Vietnam to join me in this visit, and they had frank talks with American and international institutions who have interest in these issues. Ladies and gentlemen, the message that I wish to emphasize is that Vietnam hopes to work with the United States to further this full cooperation in the interest of the two countries' people. We should work together to nurture a peaceful, 
stable, dynamic, and prosperous Asia Pacific. And we strive, we must strive harder in our cooperation for that common objective within the principle of mutual respect, equality, and mutual benefit. I thank you, Dr. Sean Hamre, and you all for your very cordial reception. I hope that the CSIS will continue with your many conferences, seminars, rounds, tables, in order to exchange ideas on the cooperation processes in Asia Pacific. I hope you will exchange ideas on how to boost bilateral relations with Vietnam as well. I hope each of you who are present here will continue with your activities to contribute in a significant way towards this process as you have done so far. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the president has time to take uh, a couple questions, and then he's flying to New York uh, this evening. So if I could uh, see uh, if there are questions, I'd like to call on you. Uh, the gentleman in the front here. Thank you, Mr. President, for sharing your thought with us. Uh, I have a couple questions I would like to ask you, if I may. This morning, when you met with President Obama, both presidents talked about bringing, opening a new level of bilateral relationship, and also talk about comprehensive partnerships. My question is that, can you tell us what do you think is different? The new commitment is different or new compared to previous commitment between the two countries. Number two, if you have to choose one of the features, what would you consider as the most important feature of this new commitment to comprehensive partnership. And number three, <laughs> what do you think about the possible impact of this new comprehensive partnership to Vietnam relations with other countries in the region? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me ask, uh, take another one, uh, Stanley Roth here in front. Stanley Roth, the Boeing Company. Let me add with the other people in welcoming you to Washington. Uh, it's a very good day for the bilateral relationship, speaking from someone who was on the 1995 trip with Secretary Christopher. I thought I was going to ask you a question about growth, but you spoke so much about that in your speech. Instead, I'd like to ask you about the strategic environment that you began talking about at the beginning of your remarks. Specifically, could you talk about the U.S. rebalancing towards the Asia-Pacific region and how Vietnam views that rebalancing in terms of the preservation of peace and stability that you emphasize was important for future growth? Mr. President, would you like to take one more? <coughs> Next, please. Okay, we'll take one more question. Uh, Bonnie. Uh, Thank you, President Song, and it's a, it's a privilege to have you at CSIS. I'm Bonnie Glazer, and I'm a senior advisor for Asia here. Uh, the United States and uh, Vietnam uh, both support the application of international law to manage and resolve the territorial disputes in the South China Sea. Uh, recently, the Philippines has uh, taken a case, submitted to its case to the uh, arbitrary to the International Tribunal uh, on the Law of the Sea. And one of the elements of that case is uh, to determine the legality of uh, China's nine-dash uh, line. Uh, I wonder whether, uh, the whether Vietnam has considered uh, putting forward its own case uh, for uh, international arbitration uh, to potentially resolve uh, some of its uh, territorial disputes with its neighbors in the South China Sea. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, you want to take one? The 
gentleman here. Xin cảm ơn ông chủ tịch. Tôi muốn hỏi một câu là Thank you very much. How does the uh, American Vietnamese uh, can play in the Vietnamese relations? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, for being here and Ernie for hosting all of this. I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of Emerald Planet, Emerald Planet TV. And my question is, I know that uh, Vietnam, uh, with its uh, rapid economic development and growth, is also focusing now on the environment and balancing the uh, environmental quality for uh, the future growth of the country and also for the health and welfare of your citizens. And I just wondered how that will continue in the future and what we may do to help and assist. And thank you for being here, sir. Uh, Mr. President, Mark Vlasic from Georgetown. Uh, you mentioned the uh, business environment in Vietnam, and I wanted to know if you could comment more on private sector business and what Vietnam can do to help bring American businesses to work in Vietnam. Thank you, sir. Friends, it's a pity that I have to um, take off for New York at 6 o'clock. So we have nearly 30 minutes and we'll try to give brief answers to your questions very, very fast. And if we still have time, you can uh, prepare for the next questions. It's unfortunate that we don't have much time for such important meetings like this. The first question is about the new commitments of Vietnam and the United States and what's the difference between you know the new commitments and the old one. Well, I can tell you this. Following the past 18 years, it's a long road in relations between the two countries. And we can remember that um, there's uh, twists and turns, you know, a lot of thoughts between the two countries for the normalization. There's a lot of thoughts, you know, considerations domestically in each country, not just leaders, but also the people, the two countries. But we at this time advocated, shelved the past and looked to the future and was responded by the United States, the United States and that's why we normalized relations in 1995. And in the past, 18 years, it was a long road. We began with just economic and trade cooperation. You are very well aware of that. And then we received the uh, normal trading, uh, permanent normal trade uh, status. And then we have BTA. And then you supported it to become the WTO. And now each of you here also supports Vietnam as a partner in the TPP. The agreements between President Obama and I this morning, as you know, is published in the media. You uh, may have read all. Previously, it was just economic and trade, but now it's comprehensive cooperation between two countries, not just economic and trade, but uh, you know, politics, policy, uh, diplomacy, economic trade as a central, education, training, science and technology, overcoming of consequences of war, as well as discussions on. Uh, areas of differences like human rights and also uh, American Vietnamese, uh, defense and security, uh, overcoming consequences of the war, and the East Sea, of South China Sea. So the interest of each country on issues are reflected in the agreement on comprehensive partnership between the two countries. And I think you can read on uh, websites and you can see the full information about you know, the differences between new commitments and old one, and I think is a substantial difference compared to the uh, time 
18 years ago when we normalized relations. I think that provides the basic foundation for the further growth of comprehensive cooperation between two countries in the time to come in the interest of the two countries and contribute to peace, stability, and cooperation in Asia Pacific and in uh, Southeast Asia. You also asked about the impact of Vietnam US comprehensive uh, partnership to uh, relations between Vietnam and other countries in the region. I think it's an interesting question. Each um, country, as a member of the, of the United Nations, have the right to choose cooperation with any member of the United Nations, and that's inalienable right. When we choose to have comprehensive uh, partnership with you, you know, we take into consideration domestic and international affairs. Domestic is okay. I think international is also okay because the element of this comprehensive partnership is not only in Vietnam's interest or in Americans' interest, but also help contribute to Asia Pacific and in uh, Southeast Asia. You also mentioned about the strategic environment in the rebalancing of the United States policy in Asia Pacific. Are you asking about the importance of this policy? The significance of this policy is that you know, the uh, government of the United States have mentioned, have explained this policy to the world, and I think I'm not in position to further explain it. But I understand in a simple way that this policy proceeds from the interest of the United States. But it also brings benefit to other countries, and we hope that this policy will help contribute to ensuring peace, stability, cooperation, and development, and continue to develop and promote dynamism in Asia Pacific. And we hope that. And you will, uh, and this will help uh, bring benefit to the United States and all countries in the region. The uh, next question is application of international law to settle uh, disputes in the EC. And uh, recently, our friends, the Philippines, has fired uh, has brought China to the International Arbitral Tribunal on the Law of the Sea. And what is the position of Vietnam in this regard? Uh, so th the position of Vietnam is that we always oppose the <clears throat> Nine Dash Line claim of China because uh, it is a groundless claim, uh, both legally and practically. And I understand that the uh, CSIS, uh, which is a very <clears throat> advanced policy research in the world, will help us, uh, um, uh, may help us find out the uh, legal foundation of the nine dash line claim of China, because we cannot find any uh, legal foundation for such a claim. And <clears throat> Uh, on a um, on the scientific uh, basis, we do not find any uh, any ground for such a claim, and therefore <laughs> it is the consistent policy of Vietnam to oppose the nine dotted line claim by China. And regarding your question about the litigation of the Philippines uh, to the International Arbitral Tribunal on the Law of the Sea. Regarding China's claim, I, we believe that uh, we do not have any further comment on uh, the Philippines' litigation, and uh, believe that the Philippines, as a member of the United Nations, has uh, all the legal rights to uh, uh, carry on with uh, any uh, proceedings they uh, would like to have. Regarding uh, the talks between me and President Obama this morning, uh, uh, I have on behalf of the Vietnamese people to express our sincere thanks to the Obama administration for uh, their support and assistance extended to the uh, Vietnamese uh, living in the United States. And uh, 
we know that the majority of the Vietnamese living in the United States are uh, leading a very successful life, both uh, politically and economically and other areas as well. And therefore, I have expressed uh, our sincere gratitude uh, to the Obama administration for uh, the care, for the support and assistance they have extended to our compatriots who are living and working in the United States. And the second point I have uh, uh, shared with President Obama is that we are confident that our compatriots uh, living in the United States will continue to serve as a bridge uh, to uh, foster the relations between Vietnam and the United States and also to elevate our bilateral uh, ties on a higher plane. And they always play a very important role in this process. Uh, the next question is, the uh, how to ensure the balance between economic growth and uh, environmental protection. Uh, perhaps you understand very well uh, the desire of uh, developing countries who wish to um, uh, step up the process of economic growth. And in this process, we are uh, definitely encountered many difficulties and challenges, including uh, the lack of a, a balance between uh, economic development and environmental protection. But uh, we are also uh, fully aware of uh, the need to ensure um, uh, environmental uh, protection in our effort to have uh, sustainable development. And therefore, uh, the Vietnamese government has taken many policies uh, to uh, protect the environment and we have also called for foreign investment uh, and the assistance of international friends uh, in the field of environmental protection in our country and what I just like to affirm to you that we always attach great importance on uh, this issue and we look forward to your continued advice and assistance and support uh, in this regard so that we can do uh, better on on uh, this issue. Uh, the final question about the development of uh, the private sector in Vietnam. And as you know, uh, now in our country, uh, there are uh, lots of private companies. And as you know, the uh, state sector only uh, uh, accounts for uh, about a 30% share of the economy. And um, indeed, uh, now the uh, uh, private sector is playing an increasingly incent, uh, important role in our economy, and it serves as a very important driving force for economic growth. And uh, recently, uh, there are about um, uh, 600,000 equitized companies or private companies in our country. And we believe that together with the development of the country, the private sector in our country will uh, uh, prosper. And uh, actually, there are uh, millions of small and medium enterprises active in our country. And we attach a great importance uh, to their role in our social uh, and economic life. And uh, we and we also value uh, the foreign direct investment in Vietnam. And we consider the foreign investor sector as an in integral part uh, of uh, the economy. And we uh, hope that you will continue to contribute, uh, to make contributions to our uh, economic uh, development. And yesterday, I uh, said a sentence that uh, your failure is uh, ours. And actually, the Vietnamese people would never want to have failure. And that, uh, and when you come to Vietnam, if you do have any difficulties in your in doing your business and investment, please uh, do not hesitate to uh, to tell us, and we are ready to uh, address your difficulties and challenges. And uh, actually, we still have uh, about five minutes left. Thank you very much. Please join me in thanking the president for his remarks. Let me let me just uh, thank all of you for coming. The uh, the Secret Service has required that uh, you stay seated while the president uh, makes his way. Uh, he's got to uh, come to New York, Mr. President. 
Before we let you go, I would like to welcome you back to CSI, CSIS anytime. And I think the way you're answering questions, maybe the best format would be a fireside chat next time. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming to CSIS, sir. Thưa các bạn, cho tôi nói đôi lời trước khi rời đây. Rất là tiếc những cái trung tâm quan trọng này thì tôi lần trước. It's a pity that, uh, well, uh, actually I spoke once at uh, Hololutu at uh, East West Center and I spoke so enthusiastically that uh, President Medvedev had to wait for me for 10 minutes and uh, it was not uh, an accident because we knew each other well and next time when I come back to the United States I will spend more time and you can, you know, ask more frank questions, I think. Uh, your questions and comments are very constructive and useful and it helps us and again thank you very much for your participation and see you again.